was. So, yes, it is a completely different day, but I'm wearing the same shirt for continuity. One million. I feel like it still hasn't really settled into my brain yet, even though it's like a full week later. It still shocks me when I look at my page. I'm like, ooh, ooh, that's too many. But it seems like a lot, and it seems like a thing that you should celebrate. You know, people do a lot of big things for these types of milestones. They give away MacBook Pros, they go skydiving, but I was trying to think of what represents my love for you guys, and the one thing I love just as much as you guys is a good bowl of cereal. <laughs> that was a really bad transition. So, basically for a million subscribers, I am going to try to eat a million pieces of cereal, one for, for each lovely one of you, and we're gonna hope that I don't throw up. So it is around 8 a.m. right now. I'm heading to Ralph's, hopefully before there's too many people walking around in the aisles judging me for filming myself talking about cereal, but we'll see. Just another day in my life, kids. I did want to say before I jump into the silliness of this video, though, just thank you guys so fucking much. I'm not gonna cry or anything over this because I have learned at an early age to shield my emotions from the world, but I did want to say thank you so much. So, on to the cereal challenge we go. I had to move aisles because there are employees in the other one. Now you might be wondering how you count up to a million pieces of cereal. Here is some quick cereal maths for you. I am approximating that each piece of cereal is around 0.2 by 0.2 by 0.1 inches. I realize this is a little bit generous when it comes to larger cereals like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, but it might actually be under approximating something very thin like a flake. The average volume of a cereal box is around 8 inches wide by 12 inches tall by 2 inches thick, which gives us 192 cubic inches. Divide that by the 0.004 cubic inches of a piece of cereal, and we're left with 48,000 pieces of cereal per box, which I also realize is a bit generous because cereals don't like exactly pack into the box with maximum efficiency, but we're going to be a little bit generous here for the sake of my digestive system and me not wanting to throw up. A million divided by 48,000 pieces of cereal leaves us with approximately 20 boxes of cereal. Okay, so later I googled it and I found out that for larger cereals they average closer to 3,000 pieces per box, but we're just uh, gonna ignore that fact for this video maybe and keep watching and pretend like it's actually a million pieces, thanks. Life could be a dream, sweetheart. If I just spent over $90 on cereal, honestly, maybe it would have been cheaper to buy a fucking MacBook. Editing Ashley, that sequence better have been fucking cute because I spent over two hours filming it and a lot of awkward eye contact with grocery store employees. <laughs> So this is what my life has come to. Of course, we gotta start with Cinnamon Toast Crunch, the OG and my one true love. No offense, David. Here we go, folks. The first bowl. As you may predict, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, 10 out of 10 experience. In terms of soakability, it is like the perfect wait time so that you can comfortably finish a bowl before it gets soggy. Unlike some cereals, which you do that immediately. <clears throat> rice checks. The texture is also a good balance between something that's crunchy but something that also doesn't like absolutely destroy the top of your mouth. <coughs> Captain Crunch. I think it is the perfect cereal to spice things up a little bit. Pun intended, get it? Because cinnamon is a spice. <laughs> I'm not funny. Well, today's the day, folks. I'm about to lose my Cocoa Puffs virginity. I feel like the kids who eat Cocoa Puffs growing up are the type of kids who do whippets when they're in college. As a breakfast food, I give Cocoa Puffs like a 3 out of 10. But as a period craving food, 11 out of 10. <laughs> it honestly just looks like a Fruit Loop, but their mascot is coked up. That just is a Fruit Loop without the hole. This may shock people, but I've never had a Lucky Charm. I know these like are addictive to some people. I met this girl in Germany who was dead ass like, please get me a box of Lucky Charms, pick out just the marshmallows and then mail them to me. I will pay you. Despite the fact that I am on my fourth bowl of cereal in one sitting, at which point pretty much anything starts to taste bad. Weird German girl who asked me to smuggle Lucky Charms across the border for her. I see where you're coming from. These are pretty goddamn good. Honey snacking good. Why is that so sexual? Hmm. The texture reminds me of the texture of insulation foam. You know, it's just like not great. I. Oh no! Not my cinnamon toast crunch. No, my baby. Oh 
Oh my lord. How do kids eat this for breakfast? This is a chocolate bar masquerading as a cereal. At this point, it's officially time for me to change out of my jeans into leggings because, oh, I'm so full. God, I look like fucking Pooh Bear just eating his honey. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Raisin Bran, the cereal for people who are old enough to have given up on life. Even their fucking logo looks one bad day as the manager of a Verizon store away from leaving Becky and the kids forever and moving to Thailand. This is a cereal that exists? Zero out of 10. Now if Cocoa Puffs are the cocaine of cereals, Apple Jacks are the methamphetamine. Look at this apple. He's on that good, good Breaking Bad shit. Anyways, let's, oh. This is just Fruit Loops, except they're orange. Ah, yes. <laughs> the sweet smell of a craft store during Christmas time. Was Fruity Pebbles invented by the Flintstones or was the Flintstones cartoon a spinoff of the cereal Fruity Pebbles? Hold on. Okay, so according to Google, they invented these cereals because of the Flintstones show. That is capitalism at its finest, my friend. Well, it's confirmed, folks. Cereal really does only come in three flavors, neon fruit, wheat sugar, and chocolate. This is a Rice Krispie, but if the Easter Bunny shouted it out and made it fruit flavored. Not bad though. I need this again. I'm just gonna brush my teeth real quick because this is too much sugar for me and I feel so gross. Ah. Uh, Oh, you can do it. This is a fruity little option. Honestly, pretty sure these did not exist when I was a kid. This seems like some Gen Z shit. Mm -mm. Oh. This is perhaps the most peculiar cereal I've ever tasted. It's like those strawberry shortcake ice cream popsicles at a love child with children's liquid ibuprofen, and this is what they created. Next, we've got Honey Bunches of Oats, the responsible 30-year-old career woman of cereals. Now, believe it or not, this was actually my favorite cereal growing up, more than Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <gasps> Honey Nut Cheerios. This is like the responsible 40-year-old mom of cereals. There is a slight aftertaste of cardboard, but other than that, she is a lovely and dependable healthy-ish cereal. This must be the fucking heroin of cereals. This stuff looks intense. It looks like this nice flaky pastry surrounding gooey chocolate. It's basically like a chocolate croissant, but in cereal form. No, I've been clickbaited by a cereal package. This shit is like a hard sugary Captain Crunch surrounding the smallest piece of chocolate I've ever seen. No! Huh. You can do this, Ashley. Mm. Nine more boxes. I am already a little bit suspicious about this cereal because it looks suspiciously like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and I do not take somebody ripping off Cinnamon Toast Crunch lightly. Hmm. Interesting. Bolted Brands is like Cinnamon Toast Crunch's weird uncle who lives in Canada. They're clearly related, you know, it's the exact same shape and a very similar texture, but Golden Grahams is a bit more dense, it's a bit more weedy, and the cinnamon flavor is replaced with maple syrup. Not bad, not bad, Golden Grahams. Reese's Puffs. I do like a good Reese's cup. I actually ate like two Reese's cups every single day when I was in high school. God bless my metabolism back then. There's no chocolate and there's no visible peanut butter on this. Yet they taste exactly like a Reese's peanut butter cup. What is this sorcery? Now this is the fucking Molly of cereals. He is rolling on something. Maybe it's just the delicious taste of Cookie Crisp. Maybe it's some MDMA, we'll never know. A solid 6.5 out of 10. It looks like a chocolate chip cookie, but it tastes like corn sugar, like all the rest of the cereals do. Frosted mini wheat little bites. Frosted flakes. This is what I ate all the time growing up. It's dead ass just cornflakes, but with sugar on it. 
Damn, Young Ashley had some pretty good taste, if I may say so myself. Golden Crisp looks nearly identical to Honey Smacks. This seems to be the same thing, but with a slightly different animal on front. The texture is actually surprisingly a lot better. This is very foamy, but this is properly crunchy. Oh, the last cereal. This is a cereal that brings back good memories because it is the cereal that I only ever ate when I was on vacation. For some reason, we never had it at home, but we'd buy it like when we went to the beach or something like that. Also, my family only ever went to the beach during October, so it wouldn't be crowded, but it also happened to be freezing and then the beach wasn't fun. As I finish up my final bowl of cereal, I thought I would talk a little bit more about, you know, hitting this milestone and what's next in my life. I don't want to make this video sad, and I'm not sure this is something that a lot of people will understand, but when I reached a million, I actually had like a couple hours where I was really sad and confused. And I'm not sure that's a reaction that anybody ever shows on their channel. Like they're just really happy and happy crying and they celebrate with their family and stuff. I'm so grateful for you guys and for a million subscribers. And don't for a second think that I don't love all of you. And I'm so lucky to be where I am. But it made me think about the way that I was raised and the way that I work a lot of the times is just if you work hard enough, and you're miserable for this long, it's okay as long as once you reach an achievement, you're gonna be happy and it's gonna be worth it. And I felt like that after high school, I grinded my ass off working minimum wage jobs and getting straight A's. I felt like once I just got free and I got to college, my life would be great and my life could finally start. Um, and once I got to college, it, it wasn't enough. And then I just told myself, you know, move on to the next thing. Once you reach 100K on YouTube, you're gonna be happy. And you know, it took like a week after 100K for me to start thinking, when am I gonna reach a million? I think it's so common to constantly spend your life chasing milestones. Like, when am I going to hit this age or this number or get a promotion at my job? And I feel like I'm learning at a really young age that those milestones are never enough to make you feel worth it no matter how good they are, you know? Oh God, that's so emo. No. I'm gonna keep trying harder and harder than ever to make really good videos for you guys, to keep you guys updated. Um, but also, you know, working on my own sense of like satisfaction within myself. So that brings us to the end of this cereal challenge. I feel like a part of my soul has left my body and has been replaced by high fructose corn syrup. Honestly, if I eat another bite of cereal, I will throw up. I have eaten about a bowl of 20 boxes of cereal, which I think is around like 2,000, 3,000 pieces of cereal max, which if you round up is basically a million. So <laughs> that's a cop out if I've ever heard of it. Even if I haven't eaten all my cereal though, I still have all of you guys as little pieces of cereal in my heart. I really appreciate all of you guys. That's the main message of this video. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. My poops are gonna be so weird after this. <laughs>